When they call to me, I will answer. I will rescue them and give them honour. Long life and contentment will be theirs. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise, that has come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thoughts and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, fasted forty days in the wilderness, and was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit, and as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. This we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So today we keep the first Sunday in Lent. We give thanks to God for this journey which we have begun. We listen to the words of the scriptures, this Old Testament reading from the book of Genesis. <clears throat> God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establish my, uh, establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as come out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy the all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response of the psalm, your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. Your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. Lord, make your ways, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Saviour. Your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. Remember your mercy, Lord, and the love you have shown from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth because of your goodness, O Lord. Your ways, Lord, our faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. The Lord is good and upright, showing the path to those who stray, guiding the humble in the right path and teaching the way to the poor. Your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. The New Testament reading is taken from the first letter of St. Peter. 
Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in the former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities and powers made subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. We do not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, saying, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news, and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As we give thanks to God on this first Sunday in Lent, we ask God to bless us as we share this Eucharist together. Those of you who are watching this video will know that God is with you in your hearts and minds, and he is in this special place, which you long to return to, of course. Here we are, faithful yet waiting for God's presence always amongst us. Holding ourselves in waiting is, of course, an Advent theme, and we've been doing that through Advent and indeed for the past far too many months which we have been waiting to life for life to return to normal. Here then we are hearing what good news Jesus has to bring to us about the covenantal relationship which God has with his people. The story as the flood abated in Genesis, here we have Moses family and of course the animals which came out of the ark and God's faithful promise the covenant will be a sign between God and him Noah and his family for countless generations even to our day this time in our own contemporary world so here then as we look upon the sight of a rainbow in the clouds we know that God is secure, as it were, in his heaven. And God is also in our own hearts, very importantly. This is the covenantal relationship which God has with his people, not just to be far and distant, to be away from us, to be somehow hidden from us permanently, and just issuing, as it were, kind thoughts and uh, being beneficent for us. But no, in our own hearts we can discover that God is present there. In our own contemplation of God's love for us, and indeed through our own baptism, which we share with Christ himself. And right at the beginning of St Mark's Gospel, we hear of the baptism of Jesus. We hear of the ministry of John the Baptist, 
And as Jesus comes to the River Jordan and is baptized by John the Baptist, the people around about him read here and is recorded in the Gospel that they heard the voice of God speaking directly to Jesus himself. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And so here then is the inauguration of the ministry of Jesus as the second person of the Holy Trinity. Here is the encapsulating of God's love and God's spirit in human flesh, the incarnation, the word made flesh. And so you and I, who share Christ's baptism, have a share in this baptismal promise, certainly, yes, it's a promise, but fundamentally, and more importantly, and more foundationally, is a covenant, which means that it's not just a promise, perhaps, to be remembered as a whim, but is a fundamental part, a change almost in our DNA, a change in our human nature, we are at one with Christ. Christ dwells in us. God dwells in us. The Word made flesh is the Word made flesh in our flesh, in all flesh, in the world, all human flesh. Here then, as we give thanks to God on this first Sunday of Lent, we're making our journey together. Here then, our gospel passages which we will hear during this Lent time and hear especially on this first Sunday of Lent. Not about law, but about relationship. We hear of Moses and John the Baptist, Baptist and Jesus himself. We hear of the relationship which we have with God through those human figures, in and through their ministry, through their vision through their encouraging of others to see the kingdom of God. And we hear also that after Jesus' baptism, Jesus was driven straight away into the wilderness to spend 40 days and 40 nights to contemplate his ministry amongst the good people of that region, to proclaim the good news of the kingdom what does that mean? The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near, Jesus said. Repent and believe in the good news. Repent means turn again. Turn our faces perhaps toward a wider vision. Lift our spirits, lift our hearts and our eyes to see a wider vision of what it is that God has in store for us in our futures but also covenantly present amongst us here and now. Be assured, for example, of forgiveness. Be assured, for example, of the ability to make a fresh start. Be assured, as another example, that Christ will always accompany us, even through the darkest times of our lives, and indeed our own collective sense of that is around about us today. But see also the hope of spring to come, a hope which is held within this same covenantal relationship which God has with the earth, that the earth turns, the sun warms us again, of course, and here is the seed ready to spring into life amongst us. Lent also means spring. It means this sense that there is a newness and a new beginning amongst us. So we speak about law? No, certainly. Only relationship. For we are a new covenant. A new covenant with Christ through God's love. So this day we give thanks to God for our own lives. We affirm our faith by saying the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, but one being, the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, we pray to the Father. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of the universe. You have given us this world to enjoy and so that we may work in harmony with you. You have given us talents and abilities that we may enrich each other. Blessed are you, Lord God. In response, as I say, show us your ways, O Lord, we say together and teach us your paths. Show us your ways, O Lord, and teach us your paths. Lord, you bless your church with great riches, with people of talent, with a variety of gifts. Help to us to use them aright to your glory and for the benefit of all. We especially remember all who lead us in worship and teach us in the faith. Show us your ways, O Lord, and teach us your paths. Gracious God, what a wonderful world you have given us. We ask your blessing upon all who work the land and who provide food for us. We remember all who are working in conservation and in caring for people in desolate or spoiled areas. Show us your ways, O Lord, and teach us your paths. We thank you for the comfort of our homes and the gifts you have given to each member of our families and loved ones. Help us to be aware of each other's needs and the needs of those who are not as well off as we are. Show us your ways, O Lord, and teach us your paths. Lord, you are always ready to help us in our troubles. We bring before you the sorrows and sighing of our world, especially through this pandemic time of COVID. We remember all who are ill, for all who are injured in accidents or acts of violence, for all who are hungry or homeless, for all those who are disproportionately affected by this pandemic. We ask your blessing upon each one and all who care for them. Bless each one of us, our homes, our neighbours, our families, our communities. Show us your ways, O Lord, and teach us your paths. We praise you for the gift of eternal life. We pray for all our loved ones who are departed from us and are now rejoicing in the fullness of your kingdom. Show us your ways, O Lord, and teach us your paths. So in a moment of silence, we offer our own prayers and thanksgivings and our intentions as we prepare ourselves to receive this Eucharist in body Show us your ways, O Lord, and teach us your paths. So we give thanks for the lives of all the saints, for Giles and Matthew, our patrons. We give thanks for all angels and for the whole company of heaven. We rejoice in Mary's life and ask for her prayers and intercessions. We say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, 
Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become the cup of our salvation. Blessed be God. Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all the church. Let us pray. Lord, make us worthy to bring you these gifts. May this sacrifice help to change our lives. We ask this through Jesus Christ. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join the saints and angels forever praising you and saying together, Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread and wine out of you, may be for us the body and blood, your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. Taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with Mary, Giles, Matthew, and all saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so let us, as our Saviour taught us, pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread share the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Say together, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. So in our hearts and our minds we receive Christ in the bread of Let us pray. Lord God, you have received us with the living bread from heaven. Let us pray. Lord God, you have renewed us with the living bread from heaven. By it you nourish our faith, increase our hope, 
and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him, who is the true and living bread, and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of your mouth. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope that you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We ask God's blessing on each other as we have shared this Eucharist together. The Lord be with you. May Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.